everyone welcome back to study onion and today we're going to be talking about the equation of time let's get started so when the equation of time is positive we say that the real sun is fast and that just means that it's moving faster in the sky than the mean sun and when the eot is negative we say that the real sun is slow and that just means that it's moving slower in the sky than the mean sun. So a sundial can be used to determine the time at which the sun culminates at that location and at an observer's longitude. So the formula for equation of time is that apparent solar time, so AST, which is what is displayed on a sundial, minus mean solar time, so that's MST, so that's what's on our watches and clocks. So from late December until mid-April, the EOT is negative by up to 14 minutes. The sun in the sky is actually slower in comparison with the mean sun. We say that the sun is slow, it just means that the apparent motion of the real sun is slow in comparison with the mean sun and from april to june so from mid april to about the middle of june the eot is positive by four minutes which just means that the real sun is fast from june to september so from the middle of june until about the beginning of september the eot is negative again by up to seven minutes which just means that the sun is slow and from early September until late December, the EOT is positive, again, by seven, up to 17 minutes. The real sun in the sky is fast again. So there are a couple of different ways of representing the equation of time, as you can see on this slide. So the first one, and the simplest one, is the table. So that's just a list of values of what the EOT is, as well as the date. There's also a graph of EOT, which is the middle one, and that just basically shows you what the EOT is. And finally, the diagram on the left-hand side is called an analemma, and it also basically shows you the same thing in relation to the altitude and uh, azimuth of the sun. But why do we get this annual variation in the equation of time? So this is basically due to two things. The first is the Earth's elliptical orbit. So the Earth travels at different speeds in its orbit, which causes the real sun to move slower or faster on different days. So that just means that Earth, when it goes around the sun, has an elliptical orbit. And we can see this in that image, where at certain times it moves slower or faster in its orbit which basically means that it looks like the apparent motion of the sun it looks like the sun is traveling faster or slower there's also a second reason and this is the obliquity of the ecliptic or the tilt of the earth's axis so close to the solstices, so that will be June 21st, which would be the summer solstice, and December 21st, roughly, would be the winter solstice, the spheroidal sun is travelling faster from east to west than when close to the equinoxes, when a large component of its apparent motion is northwards or southwards. The sun therefore lags behind or leaps ahead of the mean sun in east-west motion. Okay, so let's take a look at another practice question. On a day when the equation of time is plus 6 minutes, a sundial reads 11.30. Calculate the mean solar time at the location of the sundial. So the formula for the equation of time was... Equation of time equals apparent solar time, which is AST, minus mean solar time, which is MST. So can you try and calculate the value of this question? Pause the video and come back to it in a couple seconds once you've calculated it. Alright, 
I think we've calculated it. So plus six minutes is the equation of time, which equals 11.30, which would be the apparent solar time, as it's being read on the uh, sundial. And then we've rearranged that to find mean solar time. So mean solar time would then be equal to 11.30 minus six minutes. And if you take away six minutes from 11.30, your mean solar time becomes 11.24. All right, let's look at this practice question. Edward measures his local mean time to be 12. His watch says that it's 10.30. Explain how he can calculate his longitude and show the relevant calculations. And this would be worth five marks in an exam so I would recommend you took a couple minutes to try and work this out yourself before pressing play. All right, let's walk through this question. So the first step is to calculate the difference between his local mean time and his mean solar time. So 12 o'clock minus 10.30 is one hour and 40 minutes. The next step would be to convert that into minutes. So one hour and 40 minutes is equal to a total of 100 minutes. Then, because we know that one degree is equal to four minutes, we do 100 minutes divided by 4 to get the number of degrees that it has travelled. So that is 25 degrees. The third step is to work out which direction. So Edward's local mean time happens before 12 o'clock, which then means that he must have been east of Greenwich, which therefore means that the longitude must then be 25 degrees east. So let's take a quick look at the history of time. So before the 19th century, local mean time was used by everyone, but this caused a big issue for railway timetabling in Britain. A government legislation had to standardise time, which was the local mean time in Greenwich, also known as the Greenwich mean time for the whole of the country. We now have a world which is split into a multiple different time zones, the majority of which are nominally 15 degrees. While latitude is easy for seafarers to determine on a ship, longitude posed an issue for seafarers. The longitude problem had to be solved by John Harrison with the invention and production of a marine chronometer that kept accurate home port time abroad sales even in the most extreme conditions. So to summarise, when the EOT is positive we say that the real sun is fast and when the EOT is negative we say that the real sun is slow. A sundial can be used to determine the time at which the sun culminates at that location at the observer's longitude. The equation of time is equal to the apparent solar time minus the mean solar time. There are three ways of representing the equation of time. The first is a table, the second is a graph, and the third is an analemma. So the annual variation for the equation of time is due to two reasons, the Earth's elliptical orbit and the obliquity of the ecliptic, or the tilt of the Earth's axis. Before the 19th century, local mean time was used by everyone, but this caused a big issue for railway timetabling, so a government legislation had to standardise time, which was standardised to be the local mean time at Greenwich, also known as the Greenwich Mean Time for the whole of Britain. We now have a world that's split into time zones, which increment in 15 degrees. While latitude is slightly easier to determine on a ship than longitude, longitude poses a big issue for seafarers. However, this longitude problem was solved by John Harrison when he invented and produced the marine chronometer that kept accurate home port time even in the most extreme conditions on a ship. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video and learnt more about the equation of time. See you guys next week. Bye!